the light switch written by rose black 2222 i'm going to be up front i fucked up big time i'd say that i didn't know what i was doing was hurting people but i should have known better it all began about a few weeks ago when i had moved into my new home all was going well the first couple of days until I stumbled across the light switch. First off, where it was located puzzled me. I found, well, felt it in the shadowy gap between my fridge and the wall while trying to find my house key that I had dropped. While feeling along the wall, my hand bumped into a box-shaped object sticking out of the wall. Curious, I shined my phone light into the gap and saw that it was a cover of some kind. I pulled it off to find, you guessed it, the light switch underneath. It looked so innocuous, which is why it puzzled me that someone had seemingly gone through a lot of trouble to hide it. The cover over it was one thing, but why the fridge had been placed in front of it had me scratching my head. Naturally, I decided to flip it to satisfy my curiosity about what it did. I figured it would just turn off my kitchen lights. However, when I flipped it, my kitchen light did not turn off. I checked my dining room light to find that it was still on as well. As far as I could tell, the light switch didn't seem to affect anything. Eventually, I decided that I should ignore it for the time being. The next day, I was flipping through channels on my TV. I paused at my local news. Usually, I wouldn't bother with it. However, the headline caught my eyes. It said that a couple who lived only a few miles from me had been murdered. I know seeing murder on the news isn't out of the ordinary. What set this one apart from others is the way in which it had been executed. No pun intended. Put simply, the way in which the victims had been disposed of didn't seem possible by normal standards. According to the police reports shown, it was like their bodies had been tossed into a giant garbage disposal and their remains had splattered all over the living room. It kind of reminded me of what happened to one of the characters in the first Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Anyway, I was obviously freaked out by this. There was a killer in my area. The police had no leads and no idea what the motivation could be, which meant that anyone could have been a target, including me. Not being the biggest fan of getting horribly massacred, I decided it would be safe to stay in until it was safe. That week, three more killings occurred. Although they varied, the results were the same. Only some remains were left of the victims. In the case of the first one, a finger was all that was left. The second, an ear. The third, some teeth. And the fourth, a pair of eyes. Being cooped up stressed me enough, and I had the possibility of being murdered added onto that. Eventually, I tried to focus on other things to keep me from thinking about what could happen to me. That led me to pondering about the light switch again. I went to look at it once more to find that I had left it switched on. I switched it off on impulse. Like the previous time, nothing seemed to happen. I tried conducting a little experiment. It was switching off every light in my house and seeing if the light switch worked on any of them. I grew frustrated when it didn't. I have sort of an obsessive personality, so when I stumble across something that piques my interest, it's hard for me to pull myself away from it, and in this case, it was the light switch. With that being said, however, I did have my limits. I left the light switch alone in the off position. The following week, no murders happened. Although this relieved me, I wasn't about to go back out just a week after the last one had occurred. Besides, my town was on a curfew because of it. Plus, the police still didn't have any leads. 
The next week, I thought of something. It was the possibility that the light switch may be to one of the lights outside. Turned out it wasn't. I signed in frustration, seeing the results of this. I went and closed my back door. When I did, I heard a deep growling coming from my living room. Instantly, I tensed up. I thought it was an animal of some kind. Maybe a big dog. Or a bear. If I was really unlucky. I was half right, but unlucky was an understatement. I made my way to the living room while holding a large kitchen knife. It wasn't like I wanted to brutalize an animal that had found its way into my home, but survival takes priority. What I saw could be classified as an animal, but just barely. Alien is the best way to describe what I saw. Its torso was shaped like that of a human being. That was the only similarity it had to a human being. Its skin was a pale grayish green. It had multiple eyes that covered the top of its head. They were pearl white and all seemed to be facing different ways. Its mouth resembled that of a garbage disposal hole. It was circular with pointy teeth pointed inward towards its mouth center. My choked gasp, although low, was enough to attract its attention. Its eyes shifted and focused on me. I didn't even have time to think about running before it charged at me. In the blink of an eye, I was knocked back and sent sliding across the floor and into the kitchen. It was no wonder it was able to elude the police. With how fast it was, I was surprised it didn't tear into me right then and there. That was until I noticed the handle of my knife sticking out of its mouth. By pure luck, I had been holding it in a way that blocked it from taking a bite out of my stomach. The downside to that was no longer having a weapon to defend myself with. Honestly, it wouldn't have mattered if I did. Its skin looked thick enough to resist bullets, let alone a measly kitchen knife. I know that I had no means of escape. I took solace in the fact that my death would be quick, judging by the others I had seen on the news. I closed my eyes and waited for the end to come. A moment or two went by before I opened my eyes. The creature was still there. However, it was in distress. Half of its body was gone, like it had been erased. It seemed to be stuck on something I couldn't see. It tried biting and clawing at me, but was unable to, due to how far away it was. I heard a noise similar to a vacuum cleaner on full blast as some unseen force pulled it back. Only when I saw the air ripple did I realize that it was being pulled into a portal of some kind. Its head seemingly got smaller as it was pulled through the portal to... Uh, I, I don't want to know where. My relief was short-lived as I heard a deep, raspy voice behind me. You fucking moron. I turned to find three people standing in my kitchen. One glance told me that they were also not human. My first indicator was their eyes. They were like that of a snake. The second was their skin. It resembled concrete, if it was somehow flexible upon drying. The tallest of them was presumably the leader, glared down at me. I didn't know what to say in response. The creature had frightened me to no end. However, these people looked as if they wanted to rip my head off, and I had a strong feeling they were more than capable of doing so. Fortunately, they didn't harm me right away. I shakily got to my feet. Can I help any of you? I hesitantly asked. That switch you messed with caused monsters like that one you saw to come into your realm. What switch? 
The one by what you call a fridge. Oh, that. I didn't flip it. Someone else probably did. If that were the case, you wouldn't be able to hear or see us. Oh, shit. You idiot. Why did you have to keep messing with the switch? How was I supposed to know that was what caused those monsters to appear? Let me ask you a question. Do you have ways of obtaining information about what's going on in your area? Well, I mean, I did watch the news occasionally. And while viewing it, was there any mention of killings that seemed far too gruesome for any regular animal to perform? I mean, I might have seen a few. <laughs> Exactly. Yet, for some reason, you couldn't put it together that the switch was causing it. In my defense, that still seems like a pretty big leap in logic. Also, if it was so dangerous, why didn't you remove it? <sighs> Anyone intelligent would have realized it eventually, and to answer your question, removing it would be like having it permanently switched on. Why else would we go through such lengths to hide it? Seriously, how dumb is your species? You can't figure out the most basic of shit. Overhunting causes extinction. Pollution ruins your atmosphere. The fact that all of you have lasted so long is nothing short of a miracle. Now, I had a damaged ego on top of being frightened. His words cut deep. So, what now? Are you guys going to kill me? I asked, meekly. <sighs> no, actually. The stupidity of your species is something we are quite used to. Knowing that, you will be given a second chance. I breathe a sign of relief. Whew. Oh, well, that's good. For a moment there, I thought you guys were going to hurt me or something. <laughs> Who said that we aren't? Huh? The leader snapped his fingers. I was grabbed and thrown to the floor by the other two. After that... They, and he, proceeded to kick the living fuck out of me. I was lucky they didn't break anything. But by the time they were done, the right half of my body was aching with pain. As I said, we are giving you a second chance. Not only is it your second, but it is also your last. If you, or anyone else, messes with that switch again, you will be dealt a slow and painful death. Am I clear? I can only let out a pain groan to acknowledge what he said. Good. You better hope we don't need to come to your area ever again. He started to walk away along with the other two. Wait! I croaked out, causing them to stop. What are you people? The leader chuckled at that. <laughs> All we are is beings with a task of cleaning up other people's messes. When he finished, he and the others started walking towards my wall. To my shock, it started to ripple like the air did when the portal sucked the creature back in. They had made one on my wall and walked through it. When they were gone, the rippling stopped. My experience with the monster, and them, happened a few days ago. My bruises still haven't gone away. I was looking forward to inviting my friends over to my new place. Now though, I don't want to take any chances. If the people who got murdered were basically shredded, I don't want to imagine what will happen to me if that switch gets flipped again. <sighs> At the very least, I've learned from this experience to not obsess over things as much. The reason for this is, 
You never know when it might cause trouble. <clears throat> now, if you'll excuse me, I need to put some ice on my ribs. <laughs> 